So today is the feast day of Saint Matthias Apostle, and the reading of the day from the Acts of the Apostles uh, explains how uh, the apostles gathered, and when they felt the need to uh, fill Judas's place, Judas who uh, ultimately betrayed Jesus and then ended his own life, uh, they they came together in council and prayed about who would take Judas's place. And there there were two men uh, nominated, Joseph uh, called Barsabbas. Uh, whose surname was Justus. Why do these people have so many names? I don't know, it's complicated, okay. And, and Matthias. So they prayed, and they, the, the prayer they make is lovely. Lord, you can read everyone's heart. Show us, therefore, which of these two you have chosen to take over this ministry and apostolate, which Judas abandoned to go to his proper place. Then they drew lots for him, and the lot fell to Matthias, and he was listed as one of the 12 apostles. So it's an interesting uh, thing when it comes to the question of discernment. Uh, like I was talking to someone recently and they're not really working and they're not really in college. They're kind of between things. Admittedly, this is a difficult time period as well where work isn't as readily available as it used to be. School and college are kind of awkward because uh, so much of it is happening at home. Anyway, but they said to me, I said, so well, how, how are things going? What, what are the plans? And they said, oh, well, God hasn't revealed anything yet. Now, while on one hand it's admirable that someone would say God hasn't revealed anything yet, you think, well, fair play. I mean, you want your life to be guided by God. At the same time, God wants us to do our part because it's, it's not good discernment to say uh, God hasn't shown me anything, so I won't do anything. That's, that's a really, really bad idea because th- what we're doing here then is we're, we're just saying, look, God will take care of everything, so I don't have to do anything. Now, it's true God will take care of everything, but he always does so with us, not despite us. So he asks us to do our part. We've given this example before, like I can say, you know, I'm going to pray my rosaries and that will help me pass my maths test. Please pray your rosaries, but if you don't do your maths homework, you're not going to pass your maths test, nor do you deserve to. (laughs) Because if you don't know your four times tables, you don't deserve to pass your four times tables test. Because then when someone asks you, what's four by four, you will say, the first glorious mystery is the resurrection. Which is true, but it's not going to help you build a house that will stay standing. Okay, so, so yes, we pray, but you have to do your work as well. Okay, so, you know, who, who, Lord, who should take Judas's place? There are, there are two wonderful candidates here. Well, what do you want us to do? So they, they pray about it, and then they do. They pray, and then they decide and do, as opposed to pray, and, you know, the Lord will ultimately just lead things. No, that's, it's, it's, it's bad discernment. It's bad discernment because then, as I say, often then we delegate to God our responsibility to guide our lives. As in, I have to make choices. You have to decide who you're going to marry. You know, like, as in, you, and you do your research. You invite them out. You, ask, you get to know them. You Facebook stalk, right? <laughs> All right? You get to know who the person is, what their hobbies are, what they like. And then if you think, well, she seems very pleasant, Ask her out. And then she might say, no, I'm married. And you go, whoops, I didn't see that on Facebook. Okay. So, <laughs> so, right, she's off the list. Who's next? Like, you might find another girl. And so, so you ask her out. And then you discover, yes, that she's, she's great. But she snorts when she laughs. And it's just... <laughs> and you go, Thank you very much. Great. We had a great night. Thanks very much. God bless. Safe home. X. Okay. And then, you know, then there might be someone else. And while... You've known her for ages. Uh, maybe you've never seen her in, in that kind of a light, or that kind of a context. Something just kind of, thing, oh, actually, hmm. hmm. Then you have to take that risk, right, of kind of wandering from friendship into something more than friendship territory, which is kind of always a kind of a risky change. Hey, Siobhan, how are you doing? You know, I've known you like for 16 years now. Um, do you want to go, you know, the Americans would say, do you want to go grab a coffee? Uh, you know, and then she might say, well, actually, I'd love that, yeah. I'm quite partial to the coffee. And, um, and, you know, but so, like, what I'm saying is, if you just kind of sit at home and say, you know, the Lord hasn't given me a husband or wife, and, you know, I'm not, I'm not leaving anyone, I'm not meeting anyone, I'm not talking to anyone, I'm not going anywhere, 
but no one has turned up. It's not really the way it works. It's not, it's, it's not good discernment. Like, you can't delegate to God to do everything for you. So, again, it's not all God and it's not all you. It, 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 it's, a, it's a delicate balance, you know? Uh, and I see this often even with Father Paul, the, the, the founder of my own community, you know, where we'll open missions and what person he'll send to what mission. You're constantly trying to discern, trying to understand what God's will is. But one thing he would often say is if the door is closed, then the door is closed. Just don't bang on a closed door. Wait, for, wait and pray and keep doing. Do what you can do until the Lord opens another door. So if we want to get into Botswana to do mission there and... There's a dictator there who won't allow us in. Well, then he won't allow us in. Okay, we'll go somewhere else. And when the door, when it's possible, then we'll go. But we, we keep doing, we keep praying, we keep moving, as opposed to sitting at home going, well, no one wants to talk to us, so we can't do mission. Go where you can go. Go where you can go. Do what you can do. Do what you can do. So we pray these, we, we see these, these, these how, how, how the, the early apostles, and even how they prayed and discerned, just because they were apostles and, dare I say, saints, even for them, the answer wasn't immediate. You know, these two characters have, have um, pre presented themselves to replace Judas. Well, it's, it's obviously Matthias. Like, it's obviously, I mean, who else could it be like? No, they, they were saints, but they still had to sit down and pray and discern, and then they, as such, cast lots and elected and voted. And it might not have been unanimous. So maybe there was a, a, a saint who thought, well, I think actually he'd be good. And another saint thought, well, no, I think the other character. But, you know, so even, even amongst the saints, like, the sermon isn't automatic. They have to actually decide and do, which is very, very helpful for us. It's helpful for us because there's one thing I want to hone in on today, if I may. Um, I was listening to a talk recently, and the speaker, uh, she used an expression which uh, I'd never heard before, but it just really struck me in the heart. She said, I want to learn to love excellently. I want to learn to love excellently. And it's just one of those things that when I heard it, I just thought, wow. There are so many things that we want to do excellently. You know, we want our study to go well. We want our relationships to go well. We want our hair to look fantastic. Our eyebrows to be perfect and symmetrical and so on. We want to have, you know, we want to excel in sport. We want to be able to do flicks and tricks with pool cues and all sorts. You know, you want, to be, you want to be good at what you do. If I play guitar, I want people to play guitar like Van Halen, or whoever plays guitar these days. Um, okay. You want, to, you, want, you, want to, you want to be good at what you do. If you play a violin, you want to be one of those really good violinists. Is there such thing as a famous violinist? <laughs> David Garrett. Carrot, is it? David Vegetable, right. So, so you, know, you want to be really good, okay? So you want to excel in all these fields, and that's considered completely normal, right? Of course, I mean, if you're a soccer player, of course you want to be really good. If you're a, a dentist, of course you want to be in the Royal Academy of Dentists, okay? Of course you want to be the best. But when it comes to love, I want to love excellently. I've, I've never thought, I'd never, I'd, never, I'd never phrased it that way, as opposed to I want to love sufficiently, you know. I want to kind of get by. I want to love sufficiently. I want to, just, I want to love just kind of enough. I want to love excellently. And we read our, our reading today as the Father, it's all about love. We heard this gospel last Sunday, or part of it. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Remain in my love. Okay, so how do we remain in his love? If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love. And then the consequence of that, I have told you this, so that my own joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. So loving and loving excellently, loving with obedience, makes us joyful. I was talking to someone recently and they said, an expression which... Uh, kind of shocked me in a way. They said, I want to be free of God's will. I couldn't help but think, but see, you are actually free of God's will. You are. You are. I mean, if you feel you're called to priesthood and you want to go be an engineer, what's actually stopping you? You know, if, if you feel the Lord is calling you to, to anything, to, to, a more act, to a more silence in your life, to more prayer, what's actually forcing you to do that? Nothing. Nothing. So you are free of God's will. Of course you are. But why would you want to be? Why would you want to be free of what our loving Father wants from you or wants for you? Why would you want to be free of that? 
uh, sh surely if, if we believe God is a loving father who wants our best, then surely pursuing that is the best thing we can do. If I say, I want to be free of God's will, I want to be free of God's loving plan, I want to be free of the best desires of God's fatherly heart for me. Why? Why, why would anybody want that? So, like, God, God's will for us is, is, is good. God's plan for us is the maximum of our happiness. God's plan for us is the maximum of our happiness. So when he calls us to, to love and to love excellently, there's a good reason because that's where our ultimate joy is and our peace is. Mother Teresa of Calcutta famously said, you've, you've heard this before, but it's, it's a beautiful quotation. And it's, um, there are beautiful steps that lead one into the next. She says, the fruit of silence is prayer. The fruit of silence is prayer. So it's going to be very hard to pray without silence. If we're constantly, constantly busy and active, constantly running everywhere and doing, it's, it's quite hard to pray. The fruit of silence is prayer. The fruit of prayer is faith. Therefore, the more I, more I pray, the deeper my faith gets, not vice versa. Uh, you know, if I just say, I'm just going to start with faith, and because of faith, I pray. Uh, how... Yeah, how are we going to get to faith? We, we, we start by doing, actually, more than start by believing. We start by doing. I find it hard to pray, so what should I do? I should actually pray more. As opposed to I find it hard to pray, so maybe I'll, I'll step back from prayer <coughs> and we'll try other things and see how it goes. Well, that's not like, like an, a, any skill you're trying to develop. Uh, if you can't do something, if you can't swim, what should you do? R read books on swimming. That's it. Read books, isn't it? No, no, thank you. Thank you, Colin. Um, no, if you, if you can't swim, reading books on swimming won't help you at all. If you can't swim, get into the water. Right? Shallow water. <laughs> preferably. Okay? But start swimming. If you can't pray, start praying. The fruit of prayer is faith. Faith. Where we walk by faith, not by sight. Where it's not something you can prove, so it goes beyond science, goes beyond what you can prove. Like love, it's, it's beyond science, it's beyond what you can measure. Okay, so from the beginning again. The fruit of silence is prayer, the fruit of prayer is faith. The fruit of faith is love. The fruit of faith is love. We want to love excellently. Well, the fruit of faith is love. So when I, when I walk with the Lord, not because I understand everything he asks of me or not because I, I agree with his timing, which can be different to ours, but I walk by faith regardless, it grants me this, 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 this love. And then love, the fruit of love, is service. Okay, when I, when I love people, I, I, I want to serve them. I want them to be healthy, happy, fed. You know, that, that those, you know, those moms, that are, what do people sometimes call them? Oh, she's, some, she's a feeder. You know, when, when you get there, like, and she's there with, she's got, a, you know, the snow shovels. She's there with a, a snow shovel and cake. Will you have a slice of cake? You will. You know what I mean? Like, and, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm good, thanks. This is my, this is my fourth slice. I don't think I can anymore. No, no, you're fine. You're fine. Why are you, you're fine. So there's, there's not a pick on you. When, this time of the year, in May, I used to spend a, a lot of Mays down near Naples, down <coughs> south of Naples, near, near Sorrento. And, um, they, they're, all the moms there are feeders, all of them. So I'd have lunch, I mean, I'm not the biggest guy, like, but um, I'd have lunch in, in one family and then dinner in another family. And because you're only gonna have one meal per family, because you'd visit kind of all the, the parish and that, they have to give you the best they have in industrial quantities. <laughs> And I, I, just, I, I can't, I just, I can't. So when you get like a, a plate like that full of gnocchi, and they're really nice, but like, it's, it must be two kilos, like, and I, I, just, I just can't. And then it's, oh, God, you're almost, okay, Father, you're eating very slowly. Uh, I, it's lovely. It's really, really nice. I'm just working my way through it. Quick, quick, because there's another 16 courses after this. Just, I actually had a, anyway, I won't go into it. <laughs> I had a wee bit of a belly. It was weird. I'd, I'd never had one before. Anyway, what am I talking about? So, 
The fruit. The fruit. Ah, fruit. That's it. Fruit. Okay. So from the top. The fruit of silence is prayer. The fruit of prayer is faith. The fruit of, fruit of faith is love. The fruit of love is service. There we go. Love is service. When I love, I want to serve. Okay. And the interesting, this is, this, oh, for me, this is the most curious one. The fruit of service is peace. The fruit of service is peace. When I serve and I give of myself, then I'm at peace. So like, when we think, what, what will give me peace? Uh, what will give me peace is when everything is as I want it. Then I'll have peace. So when I'm the weight I want and have the hair color I want and when I have the money I want and the wife and the family, all these things, then I'll have peace. No, that's not what Mother Teresa says. She says the fruit of service is peace. In whatever way, shape or form your, your vocation, your life has, uh, has gone, serve there. That's where peace is attained not by the perfection of exterior things. Perfection of exterior things won't, won't change anything. Ask the rich and famous. The fruit of service is peace. So we're called to love excellently. We're called to, to discern God's will, not by saying, oh, surely he'll just, he'll just take care of it, I don't have to do anything, but by, by kneeling before him, by praying, by bringing all these options out into the light, and then deciding and doing and then we begin to see the the realization of this of this promise that we can that we can love like the lord we can love like him as we're called to a man can have no greater love than to lay down his life for his friends Lord, may we be considered your friends, not just servants. May we do what you ask of us. And may we see the realization of St. Teresa of Calcutta's prayer in our lives. The fruit of silence is prayer. The fruit of prayer is faith. The fruit of faith is love. The fruit of love is service. And the fruit of service is peace. Amen.